and they're off. Two and a half circuits, 14 fences left to jump, and the field, unfortunately, reduced to three runners for this Michael Hickey Memorial Chase. But uh, quality is a plenty amongst the three runners as they head towards the turn into the straight towards the first two fences and buddy one. And Jack Gilligan is the one taking them along with the leads from the odds on favourite Hartwood with Corbett's Cross settled last of the three under Mark Walsh as they head towards the turn into the straight for the first time and towards these two, this, these two fences which they'll jump three times in all. And it's Buddy One leads into the first. Lands about a length in front of Hardwood in, Hardwood in second. And three lengths to Corbett's Cross, the back marker of the three. And uh, Buddy One mm, just put the brakes on slightly there, showing into fence number three, but lands a length in front of Hardwood. And Corbett's Cross, the back marker of the trio. So as they head up past the winning post, two complete circuits of the tractor race, 12 fences in all, still to jump. And Buddy One. Leads them to the fence past the stands. Fence number three just gets a just gets a tap down the shoulder to keep his concentration up as they jump that fence and didn't jump it with any great fluency, but leads from Hartwood and from Corbett's Cross. Buddy one, whose uh, exploits include, of course, winning his beginners at Galway, but of course, second in the three mile grade one Liverpool hurdle, entry hurdle last season after winning at Cheltenham and goes to fence number four with a four length lead over Hartwood, winner of the Leperstown Chase last season uh, before going on to take third place in the Mile May novices at entry and Corbett's Cross trying to give 15 pounds to his two rivals here but of course the standout in form having won the National Hunt Chase at Cheltenham last season. So as the three runners head down the back straight and towards the two fences in quick succession, fences five and six, and buddy one has uh, ears prick coming to it. And, but again, he was not fluent. Leads from Hartwood and Corbett's Cross. Can you imagine the second and third would like to go a stride quicker and if buddy one's jumping doesn't improve, you imagine one of them will go on. But at this stage, they're happy to sit behind Jack Gilligan on Buddy One. Hartwood and Darrell Keefe within three lengths in second. And a gap of some five to six lengths then to Corbett's Cross and Mark Walsh, the back marker, the three. So heading to the end of the back straight and back towards home for the second time. No change in the order. Buddy One has Jack Gilligan, you feel, would like to be able to up the tempo a little bit more on this fellow than he's been able to with his jumping. But he leads by two, two and a half lengths to Hartwood in second and a similar margin to Corbett's Cross, the back marker of the three as it has been throughout. So heading towards the turn into the straight for the second time and bring them up towards fences seven and eight. Buddy one, a bit better with that one, lands two in front of Hartwood and Corbett's Cross as they head to the fence which will be the last in the circuit's time. And Buddy won. Again, he just, just got in a little bit tight, but uh, didn't put the brakes on, at least anyway. He leads by two lengths to Hart one in second, and three lengths to Corbett's cross the back mark of the, three of, of the trio. Heading past the winning post, complete circuit left to race, and six fences left to jump as they head to the fence past the stands. Buddy won. Again, more fluent over that one. Hart Wood in second, and Corbett's cross just left his hind legs behind it a fraction in third, and just... Got a shake up for a stride from Mark Walsh, but back on an even keel as they swing left handed to bring them towards the fence, which is five from the finish. Inside the final mile and a quarter of this Michael Hickey Memorial Chase. And heading to the fence. Five from the finish. Buddy one lands three in front of Hartwood in second, and four lengths to Corbett's Cross in third. So as they Make the left-handed swing at the entrance to the back straight. Four fences left to jump, and just less than seven furlongs to race. And it's Buddy won the leader by two lengths to Hartwood in second. Corbett's cross within two lengths of the within two lengths of that one last of the three as they head towards the fence, which is four from the finish. 
Still no change in the tempo, really. Bully won the leader by two lengths. Hartwood in second. Corbett's crossed third over that. Bully won again. Back to his bad old, back to his bad habits there. Just a little bit slow into it. Hartwood jumps to within half a length as they come to the third last fence. Buddy one and Hartwood. Buddy one. Better jump there. Hartwood lands in second. Corbett's crosses in third as they head towards the end of the back straight inside the final half mile or so of this Michael Hickey Memorial Chase. And all the cards yet to be played. Buddy won the leader under Jack Gilligan by two lengths to Hartwood and Darrell Keefe in second. Corbett's cross well in touch under Mark Walsh in third. Just closing up on the on the favourite in second as they head towards the turn into the straight inside the final three furlongs and two fences left to jump when they swing in. Buddy one has been in front from the outset. Hartwood second on the outside. Corbett's cross just being asked for a little bit more of an effort on the inside in third as they head towards the turn into the straight and towards the final two fences. Buddy one. Hartwood travels best of the trio. Corbett's cross actually now back on the bridle in third. So all to play for as they come to the second last. Buddy one comes to it. Again, slow into it. Hartwood tries to take advantage now on the outside and Corbett's cross goes through in the inner but Hartwood has gone on and quickly goes three to four lengths clear down to the final fence. Hartwood spring heeled at it. Lands four to five lengths in front of Corbett's cross in second. Buddy one no more to offer in third but racing up towards the finish it's Hartwood who's going to win the Michael Hickey Memorial Chase for Henry Brotherton and Darrell O'Keefe quite impressively in the end Hartwood by five from Corbett's Cross good effort getting all the way giving him the weight away in second and Buddy won last of the three Yes, Darrell O'Keefe challenged me now to winning the uh, feature event of the afternoon, of course, uh, the Michael Hickey Memorial listed chase. That was good. Yeah, he was very good. Look, Kevin, um, I suppose, you know, he had a very good run in a entry, didn't he, in that, in that grade one um, over three miles. And, you know, he, I suppose, you know, a couple came out of it, but you still had Harbour's Cross there. And I suppose we were, you know, a bit defined with the ratings, but getting the weight. But, um, you know, I thought it was going to be tactical away, like with, with only three of us. But, you know, I was happy that Buddy One went on and I was able to follow him away. I thought he jumped well and... You know, quickened up really well after a good jump at the second last, and you know, I thought it was a good performance. He's obviously going to come on from that a good bit too. He looked quite big in the parade. He did. You know, when I jumped the second last, even before I got to the last, he had a good blow. So, he you know, he'll definitely come on fitness wise as well. He's not slow, and he's a touch of class. <laughs> Exactly, that's what I even said um, to the lads there, you know, he travels well and, you know, we really quickened down to the second last and he pinged it, but, uh, you know, he's not short a bit, a bit, a bit of boot either, you know, so, and I'd say he, he stays as well, you know, so I'd say there's plenty of options when I'm going forward. And trip-wise, where do you think he ideally fits with trip? Yeah, like, it was funny, like, I'd, I'd say you'd have no problem even coming back in trip with him, you know, he's he's a good slick jumper and he travels well, but, you know, I, I'd say you'd, he, he's such a good ride, you'd be open to, you know, staying three miles as well, maybe, so, um, no, as I said, he, it's nice to get that that started with now and hopefully he can pro progress on. And to be fair to him, he's a relatively lightly raced individual, isn't he? There's not much mi mileage in the club. No, like because he kind of missed the season, didn't he, after his first first beginners. But, uh, you know, he came back last year, he had a progressive season. And, you know, as as we said, he, he had a good run in entry. And, um, you know, coming here today, he was in good order. So, no, delighted now with that. Good stuff. It's been some weekend for you. What's that winner? Five, is it over the three days? Yeah, yeah five, I think. Yeah, three yesterday and yeah, Saturday. So, no, it's great. Now, hopefully, as I said, it's good to be healthy. And, and uh, no, my agent's doing a great job as well. Gary got me a couple, a couple of winners there yesterday, spare. So, no, great. Great stuff. One more to come today. Obviously, Champagne Maller in the next. Yeah, look, Champagne Maller, he'd actually a good run in, in Tipperary behind Pinkerton. Um, that went on, you know, and, and what he done, but you know, as you said, you know, it looks, it's, I'd say the two, it, it's like a mini Drinmore, isn't it, or something <laughs> like that, so, no, as I said, hopefully clean round and, and see where we are. Good stuff. Well done, Darren. Cheers, thanks, Kevin.